Hey, this is a follow-up to my last video about uh, editing a music video in Final Cut Pro X. And I had a lot of people ask me about this time code slate that I used in the video. And so this is a video that is going to show you how to make one of those. And then after you make it, it's going to show you how to use it in your video to sync your footage back up. Um, I can't take credit for this idea. This was um, JP at Letter Blue Productions. And click on this link to check out his uh, latest feature film. Uh, anyway, so to get started, um, what do we have here? I have a blank Final Cut Pro X project, and I have my audio file for the music video that I'm going to do. And I'm going to go ahead and just use the same audio for the actual video that I did. Um, so I'm going to remake this thing. So to start off with, blank project, take your audio file that I've imported in. This is a WAV file, but you know whatever format you've got, just drag it into the timeline. Uh, since I don't have any video in there, uh, this is very important. You need to make sure you have the right frame rate for what you're going to be shooting on your camera. Otherwise, your time code will not match when you bring your footage back in. Uh, if you're shooting like on a DSLR, you know, 24p exactly is usually for film, so 23.98 is probably what you're going to use if you're shooting on a DSLR at 24 uh, frames per second. Uh, click OK. So now this timeline is locked at 24. Okay, so first things first. You don't want the song to start right at zero because when you're on the set, you're going to say roll camera and then you're going to show the slate. Uh, you need like a few seconds, like five seconds or something, to show that slate uh, before the music starts. Otherwise, you, know, you won't have time to actually get out of the way, get out of the shot before the band is, is supposed to start playing. So what we're going to do is we're going to insert just a little bit of silence. And I'm going to go to the Edit menu, uh, Insert Generator, uh, Gap is what we want. This is just, if, you don't, if you've never used a gap before, it's just like nothing footage. There's nothing there. Uh, and now you want, to be, you want this to be an exact length. So the way I do it, so I move the playhead to 5 seconds. Make sure that you have snapping turned on. Um, you got, you'll want all this stuff to be frame accurate. And then expand that gap to exactly 5 seconds. Now to put the time code on, what you need to do is go to the generator. This is the generator browser. Uh, and it is located in, where is this guy? Elements. You see this, it says time code. So what we're going to do is drag time code over the top. Time code is kind of like a title. Um, now we want to take the time code and drag it the whole length of the song. Give yourself a few seconds of time code after the end of the song as well. So the time code is there. You can see that. It's, it shows the exact, you see the frames there and you see the frames there. Now, you want this to be as big as possible because when you're filming, you will not see this unless you're like right up on the camera. So I make it as big as, I, as it will fit under the screen. And then, if you want to get fancy, you can put like the name of the song and the director and all of that stuff for your slate. Uh, but all you need is the time code. That's nothing you really need. And then for, if you want to center it up, you can... Okay, you need one more thing, and that is if the song doesn't have, uh, the audio track doesn't have a countdown, then it's a good idea to put one of those in because, you know, so you want to basically a click count in to the song so the band can get ready for that first note. And the best, or this is just a very quick way to do it, if you go into the uh, music and sound, there's not a drumstick sound in the default. There is one called slap. <laughs> and actually that sounds a bit like just a click. So we have a four count for those guys to listen to. <laughs> that one's pretty terrible, but I'm going to leave it because it's not really, this doesn't need to be perfect, it's just for an example. We've got all of this put together. It's time to generate our movie file. So since this is for either an iPad or an iPhone, we can go to Share and Apple Devices, and it's already conveniently set up for that. So let's just say iPad is what we're going to use here. I don't want to add it to iTunes. Um, next. And I'm going to save it on the desktop, and it's called Timecode and we are rendering. Okay, so what do we have? We've got 
Now just an MP4 file or a movie file or whatever type of file you rendered. I'm going to open it in QuickTime. And this is just our movie. Let's hit play. We'll hear our terrible click track in a second. And that's all there is to it. This is just a movie file. Okay, we've got a QuickTime file. And you get it loaded on your iPad, your iPhone. Now what do you do with it? How do you use it? Now I'm going to show you the footage that I shot on that original music video and this will show you what it looks like on how we were using this. After you roll camera, you're going to show a little bit of the time code running on camera and that's what we're going to use to sync this back up. And I'll pause it there. Notice the cable coming down. This is running to the PA speakers which is what the artist is listening to in order to play along with the song. So I'll just play a little bit of it. Cool. Okay. Let's look at a few other takes. You can see they all start off with that same thing. Beats. Market. Cool. You only need the tiniest bit of the time code to show because you only need, even if you just have one frame of it, that's all you need to sync it up. I'm going to show you how you do that. Okay, so we're just going to grab a few of these clips and I'm going to say new multicam clip. Click the use custom settings so that you can see all of this stuff. Final Cut may look at the time code of your first clip and think that it's supposed to start there. We don't want that. We want it to start at uh, 01 and then all zeros like that. That's what we wanted to start on. Okay. Now we don't need, in this case, the syncing doesn't really work, so I'm not going to do it. I just canceled it. Okay, now we're getting into the stuff that I talked about in my other video. So at this point you could just go look at my other video, but I'm going to show you in case, you're, in case you're not quite getting how this time code works. In each shot, we need to find a place where we can see the time code rolling. And we can see it there on the slate. See 16, 17, 18. But it's not in the right place in the timeline. So it doesn't matter what frame I stop it on. I just need to know where I am at in this clip. So what I do is I use the blade tool and I just go ahead and make a cut. And now I know that this clip starts at exactly 20 frames. And so what I do is then I move my playhead until I get to 20 frames here. There. And since I have snapping enabled over here, when I drag this clip with the position tool, it'll snap to that spot. And now when I advance the playhead, if we watch, we'll see the, the time code for the timeline that we're in, and we'll see the time code of the timeline of that uh, slate file that we created. We want them to be the same. So I see 20 here, I see 20 there. If I just want to manually eyeball it, I'll use the arrow key to move forward. And we can see now that this shot is in perfect sync with this timeline. And that's what we want. Let's go on to the next clip. Same thing. And this brings me to one more thing that I wanted to show you, and that is in the angle viewer, you don't have to see these little clips, they're taking up a whole angle, uh, but it's only one little piece of the song. And then we've got this clip, and it's only taking up a little piece of the song. So you might think, wow, couldn't I take these two and make them one angle? The answer is yes, you can do that. So you can take uh, all of these and put them into one angle. Now I'm going to show you um, what the effects of that is when you go in to do the editing. Okay, the last thing we need to do is we need to put the audio in. And I'm going to add an angle for the audio. I'm going to go find the audio file, drag it in. And I'm going to move the playhead to exactly five seconds. Right there. Remember when we created the time code slate and we created that gap in front and it was exactly five seconds? 
but we just have to put the music right back where it was there. So now we're right back where we were in the first tutorial, so I don't really need to go over all this, but I'm going to just show you a couple of little things that relate only to the syncing aspects of it. So once again, we select the audio, hold down the uh, Option key, make it so the audio is the track, hit play. Hey, look at that, they are all in sync. One thing, remember on this uh, third track though, we just use little bits. So if we scan through this, we can look, uh, when that ends, now we've just got black there, because there's no footage for that angle at that point. But when we keep going a little further, the other scene comes in. So when you're editing, obviously, you just watch you know as you're editing and you don't cut to that angle while it's black there's nothing there but it's fine you know it's one track uh, two clips are sharing the one track it's no problem alright so we are done and we're ready to start editing this video if you want to see how to edit a complete music video using this technique check out my other tutorial which is located right here Thanks a bunch for watching. Be sure to check out final music video for Ignescent and uh, post a video reply. Let me know if you shot a video using this technique. I would love to see your work. Thanks for watching.